SCTV is on the air. SCTV now begins its programming day. Starring John Candy, Joe Flaherty, Eugene Levy, Andrea Martin, Catherine O'Hara, and Dave Thomas. Television like you've never seen before. Hello, welcome to Yoga and Me, and you, and Yoga. My name is Dana Yoga Hansen, I'm your yoga instructor. You wonder why I am speaking so softly? I am sure that you have all had a very loud and busy morning feeding the children and whisking everybody off to school. And so that is why we are going to have a little peace and quiet right now. Before we get started, why don't you join me in a lovely hot cup of green PT? It's very, very good. There. Just listen. It may smell like dirty old socks, but it's so refreshing. Try some. Very good. How do you feel? Okay, ready to start. Now, this first exercise I am doing is something I have done for a very long time. Grab a cushion and put it in front of you, and another cushion. This is called a leg relaxation exercise. You put your legs on top like this. The important thing is to be very, very comfortable. Go back on your elbows or on your arms and feel the blood circulating. It feels very, very good. Feel it through your toes and feel it through your ankles and move it up. Very, very good. Move it up all the way up to your top or all the way up to your bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Now, we're going to move in one swift movement and stand on our legs and take a deep breath. Very good. And one, and two, and three. Oh, my legs are asleep. Very good. Don't bother them. They've worked very hard today. Let's just move them up here into a very good posture. <laughs> While we're doing this, I want to remind you of the special offer I have made on my newest book, Driving and Yoga and Me, which includes several very relaxing yoga postures you can do at the wheel. It tells you how to take very lovely little naps at stop signs and at traffic lights and in those busy, busy traffic jams. And if you order now, you will get Dana Yoga Hansen's Greatest Alms on an 8 track cassette and my special Dana Yoga Hansen's Soy Burger Maker. This goes very popular in Japan. All for $15.99. Now, how do you feel? Oh, let's take down the arms now. Oh, my arms are asleep too. Everybody's very, very, very relaxed. Why don't we forget about the arms and lie down and just work on the body? Come. There. There now. How does that feel? It feels very If you... Join us again tomorrow for Danny Yoga Hansen and me. And yoga. And me. <laughs> Pyorrhea is a gum disease which can attack anyone at any time. This is a box of teeth. Lost not by decay, but by pyorrhea. That's why 90% of the doctors who work for us recommend water spray. Water spray does what your toothbrush could do if you had sense enough to brush.
Water spray removes unwanted food particles better than the leading flush and massages your gums, leaving your mouth feeling as fresh as Niagara Falls. So before your mouth becomes a permanent embarrassment and a crushing medical expense, try water spray from Pocket Pit and smile again. Hi, I'm Alex Travell. Welcome to High Q, the game of academic achievement. Competing today are students from Parkdale High, Margaret Meehan, Peter Townsend, and James Bridgman, and students from St. Anthony's Collegiate, Leonard Mandel, Kathy Mitzup, and Bruce Moffat. Now, each school will have a chance to answer several skill testing questions, and at the end of the game, the school totaling the most points will win the game, and also a $250 scholarship to the university of their choice. Now, let's start the game. The first question worth 20 points, and the subject is authors. Margaret Meehan, Parkdale. Henry Miller. I'm sorry, Margaret. Let me please uh, finish the question first, all right? Uh, what famous... <laughs> Margaret Meehan, Parkdale. Victor Hugo. Oh, I'm sorry, Margaret. If you just uh, let me finish the question first, see how it works. Okay. What famous humorist... <laughs> Margaret Meehan, Parkdale. Jerry Lewis. Margaret, I'll have to ask you to please let me finish the question before answering, because that answer was extremely wrong. The question is, I want the name of the famous humorist and author who wrote The Adventures of Huckleberry... <laughs> St. Anthony's Leonard Mandel. Finn. Excuse me? Finn. Huckleberry Finn. You see, Leonard, uh, the problem is that's also part of the question. I hadn't finished the question. If you would please let me finish the question. The question is, what is the name of the famous humorist and author who wrote The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn and Peter Townsend, Parkdale? Truman Capote. <laughs> Truman Capote. No, please let me... And would the audience please refrain from commenting during the program. It's very, very distracting. Please. Not Truman Capote. The question. I want the name of the famous author and humorist who wrote the adventures of Huckleberry Finn and went by the name of Mark Twain. Mark Twain, very, very famous author. <laughs> no one has an answer. Kathy Mifsud, St. Anthony's. Samuel L. Clark. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you take it, Parkdale? <laughs> James Bridgman. Um, no, I don't know. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, the answer was Samuel L. Clemens. That's what I said. No, Kathy, you said Samuel L. Clark. The answer, Clemens. Well, that's what I meant. Well, you didn't say that! Yeah, you have to say the answers to get points. We're not mind readers. No points on that. Next question. The topic, music. <laughs> Margaret Meehan, Parkdale. The Beatles. Margaret, I will have to ask you to keep your grubby fingers off the buzzer until I finish asking the question, all right? Please, now, name the following piece of music. <laughs> Margaret Meehan, Parkdale. Love to love you, baby. <laughs> Did I not just say, don't buzz until I finish asking the question? Didn't I just say that? I thought you were finished. Well, I'm not. I'm not finished. You haven't even heard the music yet. Now, identify the following piece of music. Sometimes when we touch. James Bridgman, Parkdale. I'm sorry. No, never mind. I'm no, sorry. Ready to go, Bridgman. <laughs> All right, look, look. I'm serious. Please refrain from commenting during the program. You have no idea how disrupting it is. Okay, can you take it, St. Anthony's? Peter Townsend. Sometimes when we touch. Peter, can I ask you a question? Sure. Do you go to St. Anthony's? No. Well, it was St. Anthony's turn. You have now just given away the answer. It serves you right. Way to go, Townsend! All right, look, shut up or get out. I will clear the studio if you pinheads don't keep quiet. <laughs> Kathy Mitzud, St. Anthony's. The honesty's too much. <laughs> Sorry, Kathy, uh, that's, don't know how you could have missed that. They just gave you the answer. He just said the answer. I don't know if you heard him or not. The answer is sometimes when we touch. That's what I said. No, you did not. Yeah. 
Yeah, she did. What are you, deaf or something? You did not give the correct answer. Yes, I did. She did not. That was not the correct. All right, that's it. Show's over. Get out. Everybody out. No winners. No winners. Certainly no scholarships. That's it. No points. Wait a minute. Clear the studio. I want you out. What? Come on. Oh, you want to come up here? Come on. I'll take you on. Because you're 17, huh? Still in your sexual prime. Come on up here. You got a bad credit rating? Are you in between jobs? Is the place you're living in now a real sty? Hi, I'm Johnny LaRue, and I want to be your landlord. That's right, I'm the owner of LaRue Towers. And I want you as my tenant. Let's take a look inside, all right? Well, it isn't a Taj Mahal, but it's good and cheap, right? And that's what you want. How's it going, folks? I said, how's it going? Oh, good, good, Mr. Mr. Mary, thank you. Good. Still looking for work, Tom? <laughs> The Davidsons. Nice family, huh? Let's take a look at the kitchen area over here. We've got a stove and a sink and everything. Stove doesn't work so good, Mr. LaRue. I keep telling you, Tom, this isn't a hotel. If it's broken, fix it. You people disgust me. Come on. Let's take a look at the lovely, spacious living room we got here. What do you people do? Hurt goats in here? This place is a mess. It was like this when we moved in, Mr. LaRue. All right, never mind then. Let's take a look at the lovely view we've got here from the window. Looking out into an alley here. But... Mr. LaRue, the, win the window's broken, but it was broken when we moved in. It wasn't at all. We yeah, didn't touch it. You did fix it, Mr. LaRue. What do you slobs want? A suite at the Waldorf? If you don't like it, get off your behinds and get a job like I had to do when I was 10 years old. You people should be grateful that I'm a nice guy and I take care of poor slobs like you. It's obvious no one else does. So if you don't like it, get out. Come on. At the LaRue Towers, it's cheap and it's got character. So if you're looking for a room and you got a few bucks, I'm looking for a few good tenants. So why not give me a call? For more information, look in your phone book. If you don't have a phone book, rip one off from your phone booth and you get it. It's still there. Give me a drink, Tom. Welcome to Marriage Counselor. I'm Dr. Top. This is a live show where we deal with real people and real problems. Our real couple should be joining us shortly. I hope you find it informative and helpful. Uh, excuse me. Yes, Patsy. Who's on the line? My wife? <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> yes, uh, well, tell her I've gone to swimming class. She'll be back. What? Well, I, I don't care. You make something up. It doesn't matter. Yes. Who's here? Oh, this is, uh, mm -hmm. send her in. And, uh, <clears throat> I'll see you later, you little tart. <laughs> mm. Oh, that should be our real couple right now. Oh, hello. Dr. Top. You must be Mrs. Tender. Yes, I am. How do you do? Oh, fine, do? fine. Uh, Mr. Tender, is he here too? No, he refused to come. He denies that there's a problem in our marriage and he wouldn't even come here and discuss it. I think that proves there's a problem, don't you? Well, that proves something anyway. I'm not sure what. Yes. Huh. Well, we like to begin these counseling sessions by having both spouses present, so I... I no, I... that would be best, Doctor, but I know exactly what he'd say if he was here, so I'll speak for both of us. <clears throat> he'd be sitting here. He'd be that close. All right. Well, why don't we start by getting on a first name informal basis? Oh, good. My name is Margaret. My husband's name is Bob. No, it's Jack. That's what he'd say. Oh, he would, would he? Yes, he would. His name is Bob, but he's into calling himself Jack for some odd reason. I don't know. <laughs> I see. Well, uh, what should I call him? You can call him Vomit. All right. Well, how long have you and the Vomit been aware that there's a problem in your marriage? Oh, I'd say it was, uh... Since the wedding. <laughs> oh, don't be so funny. If you're not going to behave yourself, there's no sense in being here. Well, he isn't here. Oh, I am so. Then speak up. He's here. All right, uh, look, do you have any children? No, we don't have any children. She can't have them. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can so have children. All right, Bob, I think they're a little... Jack. All right, Jack. His name is Bob. All right, then Bob. It's Jack. Then Jack. Bob. All right, Bob, Jack. then. All right, Jack. Bob. All right, look, look. You, you seem to know what your husband would say. Why don't you assume the role of your husband and I'll play you and me? Oh, well, that'd be a lot easier on me, too. Thank you. Good. So then I'll be playing my husband. That's right. I'll be speaking in a slightly lower voice to indicate myself. That's fine. 
Now, the problem then would seem to be sexually oriented, so why don't we talk about that? Oh, why don't we talk about something she knows about? <laughs> sex? I know about sex. I know that before we were married, I wouldn't sleep with him, and now that we are, he won't sleep with me. Oh, come on, who'd want to sleep with an old carp face like you, would you? <laughs> well, I, I don't know that I come would. Come on, tell the truth. Yes, would you or would you? Well, I don't really know that I... Come on, would you or would you? Well, I, I, I'm not really sure. Well, you would, you would, wouldn't you? Well, I, I think I would, I guess. You would? Well, I, I don't really... Come on, would Well, I don't... Well, you would, would you? I, I don't really... What? What? what, what, what oh, who the hell am I? Listen, I, I think your answers are a lot better than your questions. Why don't I ask all the questions, you give all the answers, and I'll go home and discuss with my husband. All right, fine. Then I'll be playing uh, you and your husband. Yes, and I'll play you. All right. All right. Oh, uh, now, Mr. and Mrs. Tender, it would seem obvious to me that you two are not sexually attracted to each other. Well, I'm sexually attracted to myself. <laughs> Now, Mr. Tender, please, I don't think you're saying much for your wife. I think your wife is a very, very lovely woman. Well, thank you very much. Yes, you are. And, Mrs. Tender, I don't think this marriage is your fault. I think there's somebody else involved. You do? Yes, I do. Now, Mrs. Tender, think carefully. Have you ever had any extramarital affairs? Well, I haven't had any affairs per se. Good. Per se? What the hell is this, a Latin class? Give me a break. <laughs> Mr. Tender, please. Mr. Tender, now listen, your wife was only trying to answer honestly. Now, how about you doing the same for a change? All right. Mr. Tender, are you having any extramarital affairs? Well, yes, I am. You are? Ah, I just said that to bug you. Oh, no, I know you are. Ah, shut up, bug you. No, 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 no. Shut up. Mr. Tender, please. Ah. Oh, oh, Mrs. Tender. Mrs. Tender, are you all right? Yes, I am. Get Mr. Tender, how dare you treat your wife like that? Mr. Tender. What? Miss, what? Mr. Yes. Tender. Are you or are you not having any extramarital affairs? No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Oh, oh yes, he is having affairs. I happen to know. Uh, oh, yes, he is having. Oh, get out of the way. You're not doing this right. Are you having an affair or aren't you? Yes, I am. I know you were. I knew too. I just wanted you to find out who you had an affair. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. Come on, tell your wife. Tell me. Oh, it's my secretary. <gasps> you're having an affair with your secretary. How could you? He's such a lovely wife. Thank you very much. My secretary puts out. <gasps> your secretary. I'm not supposed to. Yes, I can tell you. He's well, what's wrong with having an affair with your secretary? Sometimes she's the only person you can trust. You can count on her. She's not like the old bat at home who just takes, takes, takes and never gives. Well, you're just like everyone else. Thank you very much. Nobody ever sees my side of the marriage. Well, I'll seek counsel somewhere else. Thank you very much, you curb face. Well, that concludes Marriage Counselor for today. I hope you found it... See what I have to live with? <laughs> I hope you found it informed. Come on, let's go for a drink. Okay. We're gonna go for a drink and we'll see you later. Come on, let's go. Okay. Who's gonna pay? You pay. You have to pay. I used to be a sight for sore eyes. Oh, those darn glasses. They were always getting in the way. But I corrected that problem and my eyesight with the new Botch and Lamb soft contact lenses. These soft, malleable lenses are designed with geometric logic to fit the exact curvature of your eyeball and grip the eye so they're there to stay. So say goodbye to glasses that leave telltale marks on your nose. And say hello to Botch and Lamb. <laughs> Honey, could you hand me my drink, please? Sure. Darling, are you not wearing your contact lenses? Oh, I had them in yesterday, darling, but I had to take them out. The doctor said I couldn't put them in for another two months. I'm over here, sweetheart. Oh, sorry, sweetheart. Darling. <laughs> Here's your drink. No, that's an ashtray, honey. Oh, sorry, darling. Yeah, <laughs> sweetheart. <laughs> no, that's good. At Botch and Lamb, the eyes have it. A division of the Dowd Chemical Corporation.
Like most Frenchmen, I've always been fascinated by the delightful children's rhyme, Ding dong dell, pussy's in the well. <laughs> the well. What mysteries lie beneath its calm surface? What strange life forms dwell beneath its murky depths? <laughs> Dead. Dips. I set out on a bold, expensive journey to find out. Cousteau knew that special lighting and camera equipment would be necessary to capture on film the mysteries of the well. Ooh, it, it's so dark down there. You can't see nothing. Shut up. We've got big lights and everything. Pierre. At last, the crew finished their preparations for the dive. Cousteau would stay on the surface and keep in close telephone contact with his producer in New York. René and Philippe would make the dangerous descent while Pierre stayed on the surface trying to look busy. I bid farewell and good luck to René and Philippe and went to make some calls. Then the moment came. and power of water and stone, stone and water, water and water, stone and stone, more water, more stone. Suddenly the word well took on a new meaning. Well? There was nothing. Uh, I told the old man, but that goof wouldn't listen. I, I found this bucket, but it's worth nothing. Cousteau personally listened to the diver's report. Hell, any signs of ancient civilization? Not a thing. No new species of marine life? No, none at all. Well, any new breeds of marine biology? Don't be ridiculous. Archaeology? Nothing, just a bucket. Let me see that. I felt my disappointment turn to joy as I realized the significance of our find. The well had been used by human beings and probably within our lifetime. I wonder to myself, what else may still lie undiscovered in the well? Perhaps some kind of little fish, too small to see. Yes, a, a little fish, but, but much but better than any other fish. Perhaps the ruins of uh, an ancient people that didn't have any pottery or jewelry or anything. But uh, I had left those discoveries for others to make. We had already reached the heads, the heat, the... We had finished our TV program. Cousteau had done his job. Hundreds of man-hours and hundreds of thousands of dollars had been sunk into that well. And the world of science is a little richer for it. Oh, I think the world of science is a lot richer for it. We'll finish the show now. No, we're not. I've got more discoveries to make, more little things to find. We have no time left, I'm sorry. What did you think of the bucket? I thought it was fascinating. It must have been 12 years old. 12. Hundreds of thousands of dollars for a bucket. You're a fool. Well, other than that, huh? I know. I hate doing this job. <laughs> <laughs> 